Welcome to AFB Hillsborough and to this CAV rearing event. Um, and again, a big thank you for the majority of people in this room have been involved in the research programs over the last number of years, be it the Opti House programs or the Colostrum work. So again, apologies for not having this event sooner. And um, we had a few issues during the years, but we're, we're trying to get it, that back in place now. Again, so what I've titled the talk here is really calves the future and the future dairy herd. And they are going to be your dairy herd in, in the next number of years. So again, it's just going to be focused really on that calf rearing phase. Again, I'm, I'm Stephen Morrison. I'm currently acting head of agriculture branch here at Hillsborough. Um, but during the, during the event, you're going to get a wealth of information from a range of speakers. And I think everyone should have the program in their, in their packs. Um, you've also got a copy of a draft booklet in your packs, um, which I'll touch on in a second. So again, if you look at, at the calf, well, first thing you pick up straight away is they are, they should be your best genetics on your farm. Again, they're the youngest animals, getting the best bulls going on to them generally, so they should be the best genetics on the farm. So this is information coming from HDB, showing the sort of PLI values of the animals by lactation. I think I got this data last year. So you can see heifers, highest PLI figure across the UK for Holsteins, that is. And the Hillsborough herd, again, a similar picture. Those animals that haven't even joined the herd yet, sitting with the highest PLI figures. And again, the last time I pulled the numbers for the Hillsborough herd, the PLI figure is about 341. But again, it changes all the time. So again, they're the best genetics. We've got to make the most of them. We've got to capitalize on that potential. The second thing, and again, I'll apologize because it's slightly outdated. Uh, it's basically 2015-16 year. But they are a cost to our, our businesses. They are a major financial cost. So therefore, we have to do it right. We have to do it correctly. We have to make sure they're reared in a way to thrive and, and deliver on their potential. So again, average cost of production back in 15-16, and Donald, let me correct me, it's around about 1,700. Maybe it's up and down a little bit, but it's similar. It's a similar figure, the most recent figures. The bit at the bottom really shows the range, and there's a lot of range there. And some of that range is around the age of first calving. Those animals that are taking six months longer or even 12 months longer to get calving down. It's a big cost in your business. So how do we get them to thrive and deliver at 24 months or even younger for some circumstances? Again, the cost of the lay breeding, if we flick onto this next slide. This is a slide again coming from a piece of work over, over in England with Putin and ASDB. But you'll see the cost, uh, so this is the age and, and years along the bottom here, and it takes you until sort of mid-second lactation before you've paid that initial investment cost. So again, they have to get through to second lactation, they have to be delivering, they have to be efficient to be able to pay off that initial investment cost. So again, it's really just saying about the, the importance of getting it right and getting it right early. Again, an increased cost of about almost three pounds per day for every delay in age of first calving by one day. So again, it's, it shows that the financial um, consequence of not just getting it right. We always have this thought that those younger animals calving down, or there's a thought out there that those younger animals calving down aren't able to deliver their, their potential. But again, this is a big piece of data. It's actually a little bit old, and we're actually doing a reanalysis at the minute to look at first lactation yields and lifetime yields as well. This is the lifetime yield of animals that calve down at 24 months right through the animals that first calve down at 36 months or even beyond. And you'll see the peaks of lifetime yield are sitting in around 23, 24, 25 months. So that's the target. There's no loss in milk yield. Follow that through again and look at some of the other issues, somatic cell counts, those animals calving down at 23, 24 months have the lowest somatic cell counts in their first and second lactations. And then similar again, look at calving intervals, a similar pattern. So there's no negatives to getting the animals calving down at the right age, the right weight, provided it's done well. Now that's the key bit, doing it well, getting the animals growing correctly. Just to summarize some of those sort of key targets, so we're calving down 24 months. There are some guys pushing up 23, but 24 months is a good target that, that everyone should be able to achieve. Second target is getting the growth right. So we're talking about 15 months, 60, 65% mature weight, and calving down at 24 months, about 90% of mature weight. During the talks later on, we'll talk, focus purely in on the calf side. So how do we really get to that lifetime performance? Well, it's really a three-pronged approach as such. Um, summarizing this, this diagram really as such, we've got to get the health right, the nutrition right, and the environment right, the animals reared in, to be able to get the lifetime performance. So during the talks today, um, again, we're hoping to run this event from 11 to, to 1 then uh, lunch afterwards. We're going to touch on every one of these areas uh, and really give a, a snapshot on some of the key aspects in that area. We're not going to be able to cover everything in massive depth because it's a short window, but we'll touch on every area and some of the key factors from that. So the programs, you'll all have them in your book. You'll be glad to know I've finished. Um, I'm just introducing things and then I'll step back and try and chair. Um, we'll be starting off with Gillian Scully in the Power of Colostrum, then Orly Morales from, from Neva and Zoetis, Ireland, covering planning and prevention. Laura Weir from the Lisbon Veterinary Clinic talking about practical aspects of, of management. 
Jimmy Robertson. So most of your speakers are all in this corner if you want to identify them. Um, Jimmy Robertson, but covering housing and hygiene, linking through into some of the work of OptiHouse, which Aaron Brown um, leads as a PhD student here at Hillsborough. And then there's a very short presentation for, from Amy Craig about a new uh, risk assessment type approach to CAV um, environment, CAV rearing, which some of the vets around Northern Ireland will be rolling out at, as in the test phase in the next number of months. And then Don and myself will, will, will wrap things up at the end. Again, in your books, um, you'll see a, a draft booklet. And again, I think it says on the front draft, and um, we're currently pulling this together to try and get something that we can issue out to all farmers effectively. So I really appreciate your feedback on the booklet. Um, if you see anything that you're concerned about, query, any gaps you want identified, we do know there are a few things in there we want to, to add to it. Um, so please give us your feedback on the booklet. Um, we hope to get that out final version sort of mid-September, late September if we can. We don't want to miss the cabin season as such. We've also got a, a number of videos that are going to be released soon, which, which Jamie would have filmed um, back oof, springtime, I think it was, wasn't it? Um, just about how to do some assessments of your cavalry and house yourself, how, how to look for hygiene, ventilation, etc. So you can do your own tests. So final slide for me, really. I hope everyone really enjoys the event. Uh, every time I hold a cav event, there's always a good crowd. It's sort of a passionate area for people to, to come and, and, and learn from. Ask the questions. You've got a wealth of knowledge in front of us. Make them, make them work. Ask the questions. And again, a big thank you to everyone in the room, because without yourselves involved in the research programs, there wouldn't be a research program. So again, very much thank you for all, all your work and, and effort over the last number of years in the Colostrum, the OptiHouse projects, et cetera. So that's me finished. I'm going to hand over to our next speaker, which I think is Gillian. Um, so again, over to... Over to